I'm telling you this because I have put it to the test over and over and over again. I wouldn't be here right now doing what I'm doing if I didn't put it to the test. I've done it and I've seen over and over again how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never abandons his slave when his slave turns to him. Never, ever, without a doubt. There was one point, just to give you a little personal experience, I don't like to put my personal stories in, but just to let you know, it works. And I've tried it many times. I had a job when I first moved to Florida. I was a new Muslim. Had left South Carolina and, and, and was trying to gain knowledge of my deen. And I, the only job I could take was a crazy construction job in Florida in the summertime. 90 degrees outside, man. 95 degrees with the humidity at like 87% outside dying man I'm not I'm not made for this type of stuff and on Friday but I was doing it because this was the only job I can find and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of me I went on Friday and told my boss look I gotta go to Juma I gotta go I'm gonna take a long lunch today but I'll stay late he was like no man we, there's no leaving you don't leave this work site I'm like, look, this is my religious obligation. I have to go to the Juma on Friday. He was like, look, if you leave the job, then you're fired. I said, well, I'll see you in two weeks to get my check. Because I'm out. And I left. I just left. And I said to myself, husband Allah wa ni'ma wa Allah is sufficient for me, man. I don't need, no. I'm not going to violate my deen because I think I need something from the dunya. So I left, went to Juma, Not knowing how I'm going to get another job. Not knowing how I'm going to take care of myself. I went to Juma, And I was leaving Juma, And I made the dua during the, the, the two, the two Juma, One of the ones that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is never unheard from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I made one of those. So Ya Allah, my, my, my welfare is in your hands. I walked outside of Juma, And there was a brother who had just come from Philistine. A sheikh from Philistine. One of the most knowledgeable brothers I've ever met in my entire existence. And... He came from Philistine and he, had a, he owned a pizza shop in Al-Quds in Jerusalem. And he came here to open up a pizza shop and establish his family here because of all the fitna in, in uh, Jerusalem at the time. And he came up to me asked what he said, uh, Brother Yusha, do you have a job right now? I said, actually no, I just quit today. He said, well I need somebody to work for me. And he hired me on the spot and gave me double what I was making at the construction job. And this is just one instance of about a thousand that I could give you of how when you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He never ever lets you down. Because if He let me down, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. I abandoned three to four martial arts schools I had running full time in Florida. Doing well off, had more of the dunya than I knew what to do with. And left it knowing that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had for me to do, this was for me to do I knew this was my calling, I needed to tell these people about Islam that I'm in this country that I'm from and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never had me to worry about anything ever Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen when we begin to think like this that we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything else <laughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at us and begin to love us again He'll begin to love us again and when He begins to love us again our Rasul Sallallahu said that a, 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 the Muslim does good actions so much until Allah loves him. And then when Allah loves him, he will tell the angels nearest to him, I love so and so, so you love them. And those angels will communicate that down to all of creation until the entire creation begins to love this person. This was what our Rasul Sallallahu had. This is what the Sahaba had and this is why the whole world was given to them. Because the creation loved them. Because even the non-Muslims whose countries they conquered loved them so much that when they decided to leave and try to hand the governorship back over to the people, the people would beg them to stay and adopt the deen of their conquerors in mass until the entire world was willingly under La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah because these Muslims put 
their priorities in place. Allah came first, everything else came second. My job came second, the dunya comes second, the family comes second, your children come second. Your wife, your husband comes second.